Um, so thank you so much for having me here to talk to you today, guys. I don't know what um, you know about me and my journey so far, but there's been a few kind of interesting things happening. Um, I've been to the Paralympics twice for swimming, and then I've transferred to the sport of cycling. And it's been a journey that kind of looks like this, and then around like this, and back up like this. I don't think the journey to success um, or creating success is ever going to be kind of a linear pathway. <laughs> we all have our ups and our downs. So today I'm going to share some of my stories with you about reaching the top. Uh, you'll hear how hard that can be sometimes, but the, the skills, the resiliency that we can harness in order to achieve your own individual goals. And it's not going to be just me talking to you for the next half an hour or so. We're going to do, well, as I said, um, less writing stuff, but more just talking to each other in small groups, um, kind of partnering up a little bit. So just before I get going, is there anything that you specifically wanted out of this session? Okay, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> um, before I, I start going into a little bit more of, of my journey, so I actually work across the building at the VIS in Personal Excellence and um, that's all about helping athletes harness their decision making capabilities. So I've been doing that, I've been doing a PhD in literally well-being and happiness. It hasn't all been happiness, especially when I'm doing statistics. I'm more of a words person than a numbers person. So that's been interesting. And then I also cycle my bike. So I was out this morning racing at Coraline, which is kind of Bunyip Kuirup outside of Melbourne way. And um, I started the race and it was zero degrees and I finished the race and it was zero degrees. So I can now feel my hands again, which is quite nice. I don't know how you guys go about training out in the cold, but I'm much more of a hot weather person. But before I get a bit into my own story, I would like to start with that of another story and it's of these two little boys and they're about seven years old and they're as opposite as night and day and one is an optimist and one is a pessimist and the optimist is always engaging in life has heaps of friends compared to his brother who is always crying has a frown upon his face doesn't have any friends and the mum is at her wits end she just doesn't know what to do so she goes to a psychologist, pays a whole lot of money to see this psychologist, sits down and explains the situation to him. And he says to her, okay, this is what I want you to do. With your pessimist child, I want you to go home and fill a room full of toys. Whatever you can afford, deck it out. So she's like, okay, I can do that. And he proceeded to say, yeah, well, it'll bring some happiness into his life and hopefully he'll you know, have more friends, etc., etc. In contrast with your optimist child, what I want you to do is go home and fill a room full of horse crap. And she was just like, what? Did I hear you right? Horse crap? That's going to be disgusting. And he was just like, yeah, it's going to bring him back down to earth. And she was just like, that is the weirdest piece of advice. But, you know, she paid a whole lot of money for it. So she goes home, fills one room full of toys, one room full of horse crap. She puts her two kids in there and she locks the door for an hour. So with that pessimist child, was the same, uh, he had the same attitude towards life that the doctors pretty much had when I was born. So it's a little bit obvious today, but not entirely obvious. I was born without my right foot and fibula, which happens to one in every 10,000 people or so. No rhyme or reason for it. Um, but it does mean that I get half price waxing for my entire life and I don't have to worry about sunscreen on that side either or mosquito bites. So there's, I'm sure there's probably more as well, tanning, etc., etc. Um, I can also peak the color of my leg too, which is pretty cool. Um, so I have had to wear a prosthetic leg ever since I have learned to crawl and that has brought its own host of challenges and pathways and my own life adventures. But what it meant was that I uh, head to the Paralympic pathway instead of the Olympic pathway. Now, who here has ever broken an arm, broken a leg or something like that? Yeah? And you, had to, you guys had to have plaster cast? Just curious, was it from sport? Or was it just life stuff? 
just life stuff. I actually fell off a bus in year 12. That was highly embarrassing. Oop. We've just got a, some late entries, I think. They'll come in and take a seat. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Which session are you here for? The first session or the second session? We just finished and we come for the insurance. Okay. Can any, does anybody else know? <laughs> take a seat, guys. We've only been started for about five minutes or so. <laughs> Hey guys, take a seat. Welcome, welcome. So guys, are you here till 2.45 until 3.30 or um, the session before that, do you know? Before that. Before that, okay, cool. So we got about another 15 minutes or so. Awesome. So I was just telling everyone, um, I am a Paralympian in swimming, I am now a cyclist and born with a little bit missing, my right foot and fibula. And that has meant that I've gone down a Paralympic pathway for my sporting career. So with that sporting career, it's been a really big balancing act between all of these different facets of my life. And I'm sure you guys are the same in terms of you've not only got your sport, but you've also got your school, then you've probably got time you wanna spend with friends and family, and then other stuff that you enjoy doing as well, yeah? So there's all these different facets of life. So, I don't know if anybody else ever has ever felt like this before. I sometimes feel like that. Or maybe like this one. I felt a little bit like that this morning in my race when it was so cold and like, and my wheels stuck to the ground. Apparently they weren't. I was just going a little bit slow at some, some points. Sometimes we can try and squeeze in too much. I'm a big, uh, I've learned how to say no over the past couple of years, but it has been a skill that I've been developed because I really like helping people. So sometimes we squeeze in too much. And sometimes we can try and cut corners <laughs> or multitask as well. So in life, it's all about mastering time. But can anybody tell me, so these are different facets of life that I've got on the screen behind me. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture, this life wheel? Can anybody tell me? Close-ish, close-ish, yep. Yeah, spread out too evenly. So life doesn't look like that. It's all neatly packaged in that picture, yeah? Whereas you guys might spend a whole lot of time training, say maybe 20 hours a week, whatever it may be. You might spend, you know, 30 hours a week at school. You might spend five to six hours of, of actual time with your friends outside of school, etc., etc. So life doesn't have to be balanced in terms of hours, but you have to feel like you're putting in the right amount of time into each area of your life, to the important things in your life. So how can we do that? And sorry, <laughs> so sometimes balance might actually look more like that rather than the picture before. So before I go into how we can balance our life a bit, I'd like you to partner up and talk about We'll just go one way, uh, how you have balanced your life so far. How have you created a bit of balance in your life? So you've got about two minutes, so a minute each with a partner next to you, or a three if you're kind of in a little row of three, um, to talk about how you guys have created balance in your own lives. So off you go, two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> okay, guys. I don't know, I should probably time this on my phone so I'd have a better idea of how long that was. But is anybody happy to share maybe one way that they've balanced their life with the rest of the group? Does anybody feel comfortable to do so? I'm not going to buy it, yep. Um, just like a schedule, so like, yep. or like, you know, every week's kind of the same. Yeah, cool. Training so routine. Times. Yeah, routine and habit are really, really powerful. So having a schedule, how do you have a schedule? Is that... Oh, no, I don't I write it down. I just like... Okay. Just know that, yeah. Does anybody write down their schedule or use their phone or something to put in different things that they have coming up? A school diary? A school diary? Yeah, so that's one example. Personally, I put everything in my phone these days and then I saw up the back we had a few hands go up. Um, just to keep track of everything because I'm a believer... Why do I have to co um, clog up my brain with those details when I can just have it in something that's going to remember it for me, yeah? So I think that's one really easy, easy tool that we can all use. So, who here has goals, adventures, etc., that they want to complete? Hands up. Okay, awesome. 100% of hands. Brilliant. So, those goals can, or adventures can be thought of as climbing a mountain, yeah? So say you want to climb to the top of whatever mountain it is, that goal that you have. You can climb to the top of that mountain in so many different ways. So you might kind of go up the left side, the right side, the middle, you might kind of go a wandering pathway, whatever it may be. There is a lot of different ways to climb that mountain. But most importantly, you need to know why. Why you're climbing that mountain in the first place. So that's the foundation of that mountain. And once you know why, then you can start creating your hows. So your why is associated with your values, the stuff that's really, really important to you. So the values are our foundation and we work upwards from there. So we've got values and then you've got your goals. We create the action steps. So little kind of probably short term goals, you could also call them. And then we create day by day how are we going to achieve that. So who here has seen Pirates of the Caribbean number one? A couple of you. Just out of curiosity, who's seen the most recent one? Anybody? Okay, well, I can highly recommend it because I'll probably go see it another three times. But the first one, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a pirate movie. And there's a couple of characters and two of them uh, are the main characters. One of them's called Captain Jack Sparrow and the other one's called Elizabeth Swan. So Captain Jack Sparrow is played by Johnny Depp and Elizabeth Swan's played by Keira Knightley. So in this movie... Part of it is about getting back this ship called the Black Pearl. And about halfway through, Captain Jack Sparrow and Kira Knightley are stranded on this island in the middle of the Caribbean. So you've got beautiful blue sparkling crystal water, palm trees and sunshine. Thank you, Melbourne. And they're sitting there stranded on this island waiting to be rescued. And Elizabeth Swan turns to Captain Jack Sparrow and says, why are you so obsessed with the Black Pearl? And Captain Jack Sparrow says to her, love, it's not just a ship with a master sails and a crew. That's what a ship needs. But what a ship is, and the Black Pearl really is, is freedom. So we get a little bit of an insight into some of his values. So freedom is core for him. And for me personally, that's pretty much what cycling is. Cycling is freedom. It almost gives me back kind of two legs. I can go cycle for however far I want. I can go up mountains relatively slowly, but I get to come down them really, really fast. I get to meet new people, literally travel the world and have all different types of adventures. So for me, cycling is freedom. And that's why, that's why I do it. It's part of my value system. Freedom is really important to me. So we need to identify that stuff that's really important through, I won't tell the rock story, just given time, but the most important things in your life. 
we've got to fill your life and your time with those important things first, rather than filling it with like nitty gritty, sandy stuff. So that could be stuff like maybe not doing your taxes yet, but doing the dishes, washing the car, et cetera, et cetera, cleaning your running shoes, whatever it may be, the nitty gritty stuff. We need to fill your life with the important stuff first. So what I'd like you to do is again, turning to your partner or your three, say one, one rock, one thing, one value, one life motivator, whatever you want to call it, one thing that's really, really important to you and why. So here's some ideas on the screen in terms of different rocks, motivators, etc., that you might have. So if you want to now discuss for the next, you know, 60 seconds or so, what is one life motivator for you and why? <laughs> Off you go. Okay, does anybody want to share one of their, what's important to them in their life? Any volunteers? Don't all shout at once, team, seriously. You know you do, you know you do. Who wants to share? I reckon I almost had one at the front here. <coughs> Nobody? Yep. Achievement. Achievement, and why is that important to you? Yeah, I would be probably pretty surprised to hear if achievement wasn't in, you know, your top five, top ten for everybody in this room. We like achieving different things in our sport, whether it be extrinsically motivated, so things like maybe some gold medals, or it might be intrinsically motivated, so improving your own personal best time, you know, running as fast as you can, jumping as high as you can, or you know, throwing as far as you can, whatever it may be. So we have achievement, which could be really important. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, <clears throat> another thing I wanted to touch upon was the importance of your social support networks. So the happiest people in the world, without exception, all have strong social support networks. Now, I'm gonna touch upon uh, some of my achievements, but one of my medals that I recently got, and I'll probably speak a little bit more about it in the couch, se couch session, but I won this UCI World Cup medal a couple of weeks ago uh, in Italy, and it literally, it took about seven years to achieve this medal. But for me, I can count 83 different people directly involved in helping me get this gold medal. Sport is not a lone journey. We need social support networks through fan, friends, family, coaches, etc., etc. VIS is a, a massive social support and hopefully something that you guys may or may, may will be aiming for in the future. But there's this beautiful African proverb uh, which goes, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go the distance, go together. And you guys all want to be in sport for at least a couple of years, yeah? <laughs> so we need to go the distance. So we need to surround ourselves by people who are on the same mission as us, and we need to support them as they support us as well. So it's a two-way street there. So, next question for you guys is, probably just do your top one. <laughs> what is your top way 
to improve your communication or social support networks. So top way to improve your communication or social support networks. So you have another two minutes to speak with your partners. Off you go, top way. Okay, I'm going to pick on this side because this side has been quite heavily dominated in terms of providing some answers for me. So I need somebody on this side. What's your top way of either improving communication skills or social support networks? Ladies, <coughs> what did we have? I said technology. So technology? That's an interesting one. So how can technology improve our communication or social support networks? Well, if you wanted to get in contact with someone, it's pretty easy with a phone. Yep. Definitely. Question for you, when you're then with that person after you've contacted them, do you think, so for example, you're just sitting down having a chat with that person. If you have your phone out and visible, do you think that enhances or detracts from your conversation with that person? Detracts, yeah. So I'm a big believer in using technology for all of the great stuff that it can do. But personally, I like to disconnect in order to connect. So when I'm with my friends, I, I believe that I'm showing them respect by putting my phone away and actually sitting there and talking to that person rather than saying, my phone is more important than you, social media is more important than you, et cetera, et cetera. So personally, I put it away. So that's just one little thing that I do to improve that face-to-face -face communication but after I've used probably that phone to communicate with them in the first place, yeah, to organise it. So I think technology is a bit of a two-way street there. So th thanks for sharing that one, really good. Okay, resiliency. <coughs> so, I don't know about you guys, um, but I believe the secret to success is literally hard work. <laughs> There's no magic pill that, that we're gonna swallow. Uh, for me personally, my transition from swimming to cycling was a pretty long one. I had a great initial six months. Uh, I picked up some, some national medals um, and was training like an elite athlete. However, my body hadn't quite adapted from swimming to cycling. My ligaments and my tendons were still swimmers tendons and ligaments as opposed to being a cyclist. And what happened was I started to develop some hip pain and we went th through a conservative approach to rehab for eight months and that didn't work. And I went and saw a surgeon and he was like, oh, Han, you've got too much bone on your hip. We need to shave that off. So literally I went in and saw him at 11.53. He told me that piece of information and I was having surgery at 7.57 p.m. that night. So I was pretty hungry that day because once they said, okay, you're having surgery that night, you're not allowed to eat. I'm like, team, I'm an athlete. I need to eat like every two seconds. Come on. Anyway, I had the hip surgery and then 12 months later, I had to have another hip surgery. Long story short, it was a two and a half year re rehabilitation process. Now, what got me through that rehab was knowing why I did cycling. So it was that freedom aspect, but you also really have to celebrate your small successes. So going from a green TheraBand to a blue TheraBand, for example, you have to check in and celebrate your small successes during rehab, but also in life in general. Now, it took me, I've got this stat on the screen behind me, four years, seven months and 26 days to make the Australian team again, to wear the green and gold. So I got to travel the world for 10 years with the Aussie team and went, you know, world champs, Paralympics, every continent except Antarctica, logically so. And then to not make the team for four years, 
which was nearly over half of my previous sporting career. So it was pretty tough. So resiliency played a key role in that. And as I already mentioned, it was knowing why I was doing it and celebrating my small successes, as well as a whole lot of other factors involved in that. So another question for you guys is, how have you been resilient in your own sporting careers? And again, we'll just name your top way. Top way, so with your partner, what has been the top way you've been resilient in your own sporting careers or life in general? Off you go, another 60 seconds. Five minutes, okay? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm. Think I'm nearly done. Uh, is the next group coming in soon? Or? Um, yeah, they're probably similar time. Right? Yeah. Yep. We'll see how we go with time. Yeah, sure. Bit, yeah. We'll see how we go. Cool. All right. Okay. Who he wants to share this time? I'm so surprised. So many hands are up. Anybody? Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, not let people around you down, like, kind of be loyal. You don't, yeah. You don't so, win. loyalty. Like, if you just don't, st if you stop training, so, like, you're letting down your team, like, your yeah. partners and stuff. Yeah. Your team, your coach, etc., and probably also yourself. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Brilliant. Okay. Um, one of the last points I wanted to touch upon is training your brain. So we're pretty good at training our bodies and you guys do a lot of that every single week. <laughs> step by step, we're going to continue to physically get stronger and stronger, etc. But I think training our brains is equally as important. So for example, Novak Djokovic went from world number four to world number one by purely for one year focusing on the emphasis he placed upon his recovery and his brain training. So our brains are actually through, they're hardwired through running away from dinosaurs, etc., and evolution to be on the lookout for danger. So negative stuff is kind of like, um, like Velcro for our brains. However, through brain training, we can make that negative stuff more like Teflon and the positive stuff more like Velcro. We can also train our attention and focus and a whole lot of other things through brain training. So personally, I'm a big believer in it. Um, and it's what I've done my PhD on for the past couple of years. So what I'm gonna teach you now is a technique that you can practice anytime, anywhere, and it'll bring you out about worrying about the past, anxiety about the future, and it'll bring you back into the here and the now. And you can use it before the start of a race, exams, whatever it may be. So what I'd like you to do is all push your feet firmly into the floor for me. And now imagine that there's a piece of string slowly pulling your spine up towards the ceiling. And now what I'd like you to do is simply name silently in your own heads five different things you can see in this room. Five different things, name them silently in your own time, in your head. And now what I'd like you to do is silently name three different things that you can hear within this room. And now what I'd like us to do for the next 60 seconds is count in for three as you inhale and out for six as you exhale. So in for three and out for six. Off you go for 60 seconds and I'll time it. In for three, out for six. And when you're doing this, see if you can breathe right down into your belly. You might even want to put your hand on top of your belly to feel your breath going in and out. 
Okay, 30 seconds to go. In for three and out for six. And one last breath. Okay. Good work, guys. So what you just did, you brought yourself back into the here and now. Physiologically, you actually did a whole lot of stuff as well. So when we're either worrying about the past or getting anxious about the future, we're most likely in what's known as our fight and our flight response. So we have adrenaline, our stress hormone pumping through our bodies and all of our blood's flowing to our limbs because it's getting to run away from those dinosaurs, right? However, we don't really have dinosaurs in this day and age, do we? <laughs> so most of the stuff uh, that we're getting anxious about or worrying about is not going to happen. So bringing it back to the here and the now and breathing in for three and out for six, you're swapping from your fight and your flight sympathetic nervous system to your digest and rest parasympathetic nervous system. So therefore, all of those bloods flowing back into your digestive system, away from those muscles, and your um, adrenaline levels are gonna drop. So your stress is gonna drop. So it's a really easy, do you agree? Pretty easy tool <laughs> that you can use anytime, anywhere. Sorry, we just did that one. Okay, last thing I'm touching upon today is transition. So you guys all have different transitions in your own careers from, for example, junior to senior levels, uh, school to university, university to work. We have all of these different transitions in our own lives. So with transition, one thing, um, when you are transitioning from school to university, I just wanted to highlight today, there's what's known as the Elite Athlete Friendly University Network and that's an agreement between all the universities. And with university entry, some of them will recognise that you're elite athletes and they'll give you some bonus, bonus ATAR points for that, depending on your university that you go into. So just kind of put this in your memory bank uh, for in a few years, etc. But different universities offer different scholarships and they support elite athletes in their careers. So just wanted to touch upon that point really briefly. Um, and if you want to find out more information, I'll be providing my contact details at the end. You can always hook me up for an email, whatever, if you have any questions. But life is full of transitions. <coughs> and through some of the things we've talked about today, whether it be knowing your values, resiliency, having that balance in life, etc., are all and those social support networks, communication skills, they're all gonna help you through those life transitions, yeah? So what I'd like you to do is, uh, on the screen behind me, I've got that question, what is one thing that you're gonna do differently after today, after this session that we've just had? One simple thing, one little step, something around with what we've talked about today, one little thing that you're gonna go do differently. So, partner up again and tell your partner what's one thing, one simple change you're gonna make within your own lives to either improve your athletic success, your life success, et cetera, et cetera. One little thing, off you go. Okay, does anybody want to share? One little thing? One little small step that they can take within their own lives? Anybody? Team, I, I should have bought chocolate, I think. Maybe it's some bribery. <laughs> Nobody? Do I need to like get my legs out to kind of 
I don't know, give people a leg up to, to life and, and what they can do in terms of taking small steps. This is actually my cycle leg. This is my baby leg. So this would be a little step <laughs> with this. So what little steps are you guys going to take? Crickets. <coughs> Come on team, don't let me down. We've got to finish on a high. One little thing. Girls? What's one little thing we can do differently? I'll try to work on my communication skills. And, you know, awesome. So asking people for help, which is a skill that takes time to, to learn and develop. Good work. Ten if I had some reward, I would definitely be passing it your way. <laughs> so, just to finish off with, who remembers those two little boys at the start of the session in the room? We had an optimist in a room full of horse crap for an hour, and the horse crap was going to bring him back down to earth. And then we had his twin, the other seven-year-old brother, in the room full of toys who was a pessimist, and the toys were to bring some happiness into his own life. So, after the hour, the mum comes back and she goes to her pessimist child's room first and she expects to hear him laughing and having a really good time. So she opens the door and all she can hear is crying. She's like, why are you crying? I've literally decked out this room with everything I could afford. She's like, mum. I was scared I was going to break things. I didn't have any friends to play with. And I've been sitting here really bored and scared for the past hour. She's like, oh, well, <laughs> that was a complete disaster. Hopefully my other experiment worked a little better, yeah? So she goes into her Optimus child's room, the room full of horse crap. And she expects to hear him crying and having a horrible time. And she opens the door and literally here is her son covered from head to toe in horse crap. And he is having the best time. She's like, why on earth are you laughing? And he said to her, mum, mum, with all this horse crap, there must be a pony too. So life is all about your attitudes and the choices you make from the moment you wake up in the morning till you go to bed at night. So those choices might be around your values, your goals, resiliency, support, communication, transitions or brain training, whatever it may be. But those choices are gonna to start to define you, who you are and the life you're going to live. So I encourage you all to make the most of those choices as well as the opportunities that are presented to you each and every single day. So thank you so much for having me to talk to you guys. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'm not quite sure where you're supposed to head next though, so um, does anybody know <laughs> what session you have next? In the gym? Okay, beautiful. So if you guys want to head to the gym. <laughs> Thank you.